How's it hanging guys? Mr. Holton here and today we're going to be theorizing a little bit about God of War Ragnarok. So ever since the release of the God of War Ragnarok trailer, my mind has been going at a million miles per hour, sorting through all the information we got out of it and trying to make sense of what's happened so far. And just this morning, when I had my porridge as usual, I just had this thought that just came to me. This might be how God of War Ragnarok plays out. Or ends, should we maybe say. So before I continue, I just gotta warn you, because what I'm about to say might spoil the entire game for you, so please proceed with that in mind. You should also know that I have absolutely no affiliation with Santa Monica Studios, and neither do I have any insiders. This is just my own theory, but I have my suspicions that some of you might have, you know, thought about this already. Okay, so what's so special about this theory of mine that I've decided to call it the fate of Atreus? Well, let's begin with Kratos. So we all know Kratos by now. His story is filled with blood and vengeance, and ever since that fateful night when he killed his own father, Zeus, Kratos has been running, fleeing from his violent past. Just half a year ago, a story called Fallen God was released in comic form, where we explore the gap between Kratos' disappearance in God of War 3 and him arriving in Scandinavia, or Midgard. Now, I can't unfortunately show you anything from the pages because I'll be copyright claimed faster than you can say BOY, so I'll just have to tell you what happens while you look into my eyes. So in this story, we see how Kratos is very adamant of leaving his past behind. Several times he tries to throw away his Blades of Chaos, but they always come back to him somewhere or another. They basically just appear next to him again, so he can't get rid of them, unfortunately. Another important detail is that we also meet other gods that are Egyptian gods in the comic that pushes Kratos to not run from his destiny. And they, together with Athena, really try to make it a point that Kratos cannot escape from his past. Alright, so let's jump into the story of God of War 2018, where we see Kratos again running from his old self, and he's trying to temper himself. And even before the story takes place here, another comic explains how Kratos challenges himself to not give in to rage by not attacking a bear that is savagely mauling an old Nordic man. Kratos, of course, gives in and rips the monster bear's jaw right off, and again, later in the same story, he deals with shape-shifting berserkers and, well, kills them all. Kratos is even referred to as the God Slayer by an old seer that knows about his past. Then we again see in the digital comic how Kratos goes into the wilderness to temper himself against wolves, where he actually succeeds in keeping his rage in check, and the wolves, they just wander off and leave him alone. He's not as successful with two trolls that he encounters though, and basically rips them into pieces. In the ending of 2018's God of War, we can see that Kratos finally accepts his past and stops running from it. So, does this mean that he's finished being the God of War? No, no. I do not think so. Like, it's even in the title of the game. If anything, the comics we've gotten so far, and by judging by the trailer for Ragnarok, it looks like Kratos will have to become the beacon of hope once again. The beacon of hope? Well, yeah. In God of War 3, Kratos releases hope to humans. Hope that they may be able to escape from the tyranny and the control of the gods. And he succeeds. At least with the Greek gods. And then in the Fallen God comic, we see people grasping after Kratos, asking him to save them from a giant monster. And what does he do? Well, at first he refuses, but then he gives in and, well, he rips the monster another asshole, so... <laughs> and again, the fact that people grasp at Kratos, asking him to become their savior, is reiterated by his son, Atreus, who in the God of War Ragnarok trailer even says that they have to help people because that's what Atreus or Loki wants to do. We're trying to stop Ragnarok, to help people. And what if the only way to do that is war? Up until this point, it almost seems like Kratos hasn't realized that he's not only a god, but he is also a hero to the common man. Someone who helps people in need. While Kratos always sees himself as a raging monster because of the violent things he's done, and of course there are a lot of sins on Kratos' shoulders, but a lot of things he has done well too, in order to help other people. And what he really is, is the ultimate god killer. He is the ultimate cure to the ultimate sickness in the God of War universe. 
gods and monsters. And that's why I think it's possible that, in the end, Kratos might be the one left standing. Alone. Again. Well, that sounds very tragic. And how do I come to this conclusion? What does this have to do with Atreus or Loki? Well, Ragnarok may signify way more than you'd think. In the mythos, Ragnarok is of course the end of everything, the end of the reign of the gods, which leads to humankind being free to rule their own destinies. But before Ragnarok can be triggered, Fimble Winter must arrive, the winter that spans three years. Then who triggers Fimble Winter? Well, Loki, of course, he indirectly causes it, as Baldur punches the mistletoe strap which removes his curse and makes him vulnerable. Of course, this is a little different from the real mythos, but it results in the same thing. Baldur dies in the end. And in the mythos, at the end of Ragnarok, Loki and Heimdall will kill each other at the same time. Ah, you might be seeing where I'm going with this. Now, we can't say if Heimdall will make it into the game, and as we haven't really heard much of him at all in 2018's God of War, I'd wager that Santa Monica does something here that they seem to be doing with Agarboda. I mistakenly said in my last video that Angerboda is the wife of Loki, and while she is his partner, she's actually his mistress. Loki's real wife is Sigyn. But it looks like Sigyn and Angerboda are basically the same person here. In other words, Santa Monica combined them into one person. And I think that the same can be said of Heimdall and possibly Thor. They combined them into one person. So yeah, in this theory, Thor and Atreus kill each other. And this is what triggers Ragnarok for real. Because you see, Ragnarok may not just be the event itself. It's basically a pun on the main character, Kratos. Kratos is Ragnarok. He is the god killer. And he will kill them all. The twist that I believe that we will see in the game will be that Atreus sacrifices himself in the place of his father. He will take the blow meant for his father, but deal the killing blow to Thor either way. But hey, that wasn't what the mural said in God of War 2018. No, but I believe that just like when Atreus proved his perceptiveness back when Kratos dropped the vase depicting him as the God of War, Atreus probably saw the mural hidden behind the blowing curtain. And he knows that Kratos is prepared to sacrifice himself for his son. Kratos even says as much after they killed Baldur. I don't understand. I know saving her was the right thing. She seemed all evil at the end. Not evil. You killed her son, lad. Her son. The death of a child is not something a parent gets over easily. But he was gonna kill her. She would have died to see him live. Only a parent can understand. So you'd let me kill you? If it meant you would live. Yes. Little does Kratos, as well as us, know that Atreus is already prepared for this. The death of his son will cause such immeasurable grief and rage in Kratos and possibly, as we get a heartfelt scene between father and son, Atreus will tell his father to keep helping people, to save them. And Kratos will do what Atreus says. He will do what his son asks him to, not because of some selfish greed or vengeance, but because his son wants him to. He will once again don the personification as the god of war, and he will help the people of the world by choosing to rid the universe of all gods in all the realms, once and for all. And there we have it. Then you can just line up the sequels from there, jumping from realm to realm, murdering one god after another. Because if Kratos ever had a reason to hate the gods before, he will have twice the reason now. Or maybe either Kratos or Atreus dies during the battle against the Norse gods, and one of them journeys through time with the help of Tyr in order to prevent Ragnarok from ever happening. I mean, that's also a theory. Now, there are probably a bunch of plot holes that I haven't thought about yet, and you guys are free to tell me those in the comments below. Let me know. What do you think will happen? Do you think something like this is possible? That Atreus, instead of Kratos, will sacrifice himself for his father? And as always, have a great day guys. Mr. Holton, signing out.